Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Takeo Tuesday. As our cover page indicates, today we're going to be talking about FI and CI end suction pumps. Today's present the presentation will be done by Brett Zerba, and he's getting ready to uh, start the, his presentation in a couple of seconds. Some housekeeping things that we'd like to cover. Just a quick intro for myself. My name is Rich Medeiros. I'm one of the senior systems engineers here at Taco. Brett Zerba will introduce himself in a moment. And Brett and I do um, many of the uh, commercial training sessions. What we'd like to do, of course, is to incorporate everyone that's out there. So if you have any questions, please type them into your question box. And just to make sure that everyone can hear me okay, if you could just, uh, there should be a hand waving thing. You can just press that and wave your hand. That means, yep, I can see several hands waving. That means you can hear me and see our screen okay. So thanks for that. I'll be operating as today's moderator. I'll be monitoring questions. And I'll be answering, uh, I'll ask Brett to pause periodically so that we can answer your questions. We do have some handouts. And when Brett starts to broadcast, the uh, handouts should be available. They're basically PDF documents that you can download and be used as reference. So just a quick note about Takeo. Takeo is celebrating our 100th year anniversary. It's actually the Celebration started last year, but because of COVID, we haven't been able to get together. So we'll do some formal celebrating this year when things loosen up a little bit. Taco is owned by the White family and currently is owned and operated by John Hazen White Jr. And John has for his management team led by Cheryl Merchant, who is our global CEO. And Cheryl and her team have done a fantastic job of getting us through this very difficult COVID period. So kudos to the management team. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Brett, ask him to introduce himself and uh, we'll get started. So Brett, take it away. Thanks, Rich. I'm hoping you can hear me and um, and it's coming in loud and clear. Yes, you can hear you loud and clear. Excellent. Uh, another housekeeping uh, uh, item is uh, uh, 24 hours after today's webinar, you should get an email with a link to the recording and access to your PDH certificate if you would like it. And if you have any issues, just send something into TACO and or to the website, I mean, to the email address, and uh, uh, we can clean that up af after the fact. So Brett Serba, applications engineer with TACO, been with the company 25 years, and uh, excited to, 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 to deep dive Give you some more information on FI and our FI and CI end suction pumps, and I really want to try to um, uh, make this an education. Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about our products, right? The Takeos FI and CI pumps that are, by the way, that are uh, manufactured, assembled in Cranston, Rhode Island. That's where headquarters are, and on a daily basis, uh, we we probably make 60 to 80 of those, if not more. Uh, of these types of pumps. Well, pumps in general, so we have a mixture of, of pumps. We have other pumps that uh, you, as many, many, many of you know about, but the FIs and CIs are, are, are kind of the, the FI, CI, KB, KS, uh, the verticals are our 80% uh, uh, you know, rule, that 80, 80, 20 rule probably. Uh, so so they're, they're fully assembled right at our facility. And we, we distribute them uh, through manufacturers reps, as many, many, many of you know that. And I noticed uh, for some of the folks that logged in, uh, we do have some of our manufacturers reps uh, on, on, the, on the call. And uh, I mean, obviously, I, I, I work for Takeo, so this statement, take it with a grain of salt, I believe we have the best rep force, rep, rep force uh, in North America, uh, probably in the world, but uh, specifically North America, which is uh, down here in the States and, and north of the border. Uh, our good friends up in Canada. We have we have a great rep, uh, great network of reps. And to be quite honest, some of them probably know a heck of a lot a lot more about these these this product than I do. So uh, uh, trust them and, and contact them for, with as much information as you have, as you need. Uh, they are very very knowledgeable. And obviously our, our technical support staff uh, knows this product line inside and out. And uh, 
Uh, one thing about Taco uh, in the White family, they firmly believe in someone answering the phone. So if a, a person, I, I'm sure many of you uh, have to press one or two or six or seven or seven different buttons to get through. When you call Taco uh, under normal circumstances, someone's going to answer the phone and you'll actually get to talk to them and maybe get the tech services or something. So I uh, just keep that in mind. Let me get going. Let me get into to, to the product line here. What is a, a base mounted pump? Well, and beware the, or, or please understand that uh, Taco manufactures, I'm going to call them clean water pumps, all right, for the HVAC market, right? There's a bunch of pumps out there um, doing other, uh, you know, wastewater treatment as an example and, 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 and other uh, more uh, de complicated uh, type of pumps. Uh, the, these, for, for the most part, and the red guys and the blue guys are the same, are moving clean clean water as defined by the uh, HI, and, uh, Hydraulic Institute, and ASHRAE, and others that define clean water. So they're relatively straightforward in that regard. But here's a picture of one. And all we're going to say is a base-mounted pump is mounted on a base. Pretty straightforward, right? So let's look at the components that make up the bait, uh, make up the pump. One of the major components, as you can only believe, is the casing or the wet end or the volute. And that's where all the magic happens, right? That's where the water uh, gets brought into, circulates around by the impeller, and then gets distributed. So that's uh, you'll hear, hear different terminologies, but there's the casing, wet end, or the volute. Bearing frame, very, very important. Uh, and that's what connects uh, on a base-mounted pump that's split coupled, like this one is, and I'll define that in a second. The bearing frame connects the um, impeller through a shaft, and then on the other end, um, uh, it has a coupling, and then um, another coupling on the motor shaft. Okay, so there's the bearing frame has two bearings in it, and we're going to get into the details of the Tako bearing frame and how it's made and, and whatnot, and some of the components of that um, uh, uh, very very shortly. And then there's also on ours and probably on other other manufacturers there's a bearing frame foot support you can kind of see it right here that just supports that bearing frame that kind of makes sense so some of the names are, are pretty straightforward for 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 these products uh, ours is on a c channel base um, others have different thought processes on their bases but uh, this is a c channel base and you can see there's a big cavity in here for grouting and i'll talk about that um, uh, momentarily as well. So, you know, some of the basic components. The motor, obviously the, the driver, the motor, very, very important component uh, of that. And I'm going to spend a little time talking about the motor uh, because uh, over time uh, there's been some, uh, I'm going to say, improvements uh, in the industry. Uh, most of uh, our pumps go out with a Baldor motor. That's our house motor. There was other options, but for the most part, it's a Baldor motor. And uh, we, Taco, recommends that these motors, uh, especially five horse and above, have e Aegis rings, um, which are internal um, uh, rings built into the motor that uh, help the grounding and prevent stray currents from uh, uh, destroying the bearings. Okay, so uh, it, it, under normal circumstances, if you motor, uh, uh, order a, t a motor, a pump with a motor from Taco, it is going to come with these uh, these rings in there. And for variable speed applications, and, and, and let's not kid ourselves, that's uh, 90 plus percent of the market nowadays, if not higher, especially above five horse. I think it's required uh, in the States and in, in uh, Canada as well. They're going to have a drive on it. And there's a good possibility if there's some internal uh, system issues, uh, uh, wiring, not, not enough grounding in the building or whatever, that uh, that drive could cause issues with the motor. And that will affect the warranty, and, and, and it really, really gets messy. Uh, so my personal recommendation, and, and uh, we we see it in, in specs. A lot of our reps already see it in specs, so they 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 take it uh, and they order it that way. Include that in your rep. Uh, excuse me. Include that in your uh, specification. In, uh, a, a, it pro probably is, or maybe is for many of you, but. It, Put that in there. It, it, it's just something that's good, and that way, uh, you as a t team member of designing systems, it's already in your spec. At least you have something to fall back on. Um, and, and by the way, so um, they put in two of these rings, right? E these Aegis rings, front and back. 
uh, Baldor for 125 horse and above, right? The bigger motors, the bigger motors um, have a uh, insulated bearing on the back end of the motor and an Aegis ring on the front end. So that uh, gives it even a little extra protection. Uh, so, so, so keep that in mind. So these are installed internally in the motor. Uh, and, and this is an FYI uh, for, for the audience, okay? Um, if you have some problem jobs or, or some old projects or whatever you get involved with and, and there's uh, motor issues, you can get a kit. You can get a kit to install the rings externally. They, 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 preferably they're installed internally, right? Nowadays, most of them, uh, that's the way they go. But you can get a kit to install them externally. Uh, contact your Takeo rep or, or the motor guy or somebody. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's something that you have um, uh, have some availability out there. So that's my spiel about the motors. Um, uh, and hopefully that's some uh, good information or that may, maybe most of you already know it, but nonetheless, um, it, it's something to, uh, to, to understand. Coupler guard, Takeo has a coupler guard and uh, uh, that's where the uh, really one of the rotating elements is uh, underneath here. And you'll see a picture of that later. Um, and we also, as a uh, option, offer a OSHA standard coupler guard. So you could uh, get some more information from your Takeo rep on that as well. Flange, suction and discharge. And we're gonna talk about sizes and ratings and all of that, but obviously those are some of the pictures there. And, and I think 95 to maybe even 100% of these uh, FI pumps, CI pumps all have flange, suction and discharge. Drain pan uh, with a drain, a uh, drip pan, excuse me, drip pan with a drain. And you know, that's the, and it extends out far enough so it catches any dripping here that might occur so it doesn't just go down onto the floor. Another thing that uh, our pumps have, and, and I'm only showing one picture here, but there is another one down below, tapped gauge port for suction and discharge. Uh, so you can um, install, and I'll show, uh, there'll be a picture later where the pressure gauge is installed uh, right through that port. So that's available as well. And one of the last things I, I'll point out is there is a drain port uh, on the bottom. So uh, uh, pretty straightforward. So those are the components of a base mounted, uh, take a base mounted FI pump. And this is known as a split coupled pump excuse me, pump, because there are two shafts, the motor shaft and the impeller shaft, all right? That's pretty common. Uh, and, and I'm sure many of you know other uh, manufacturers models have many of these same components, right? There, there's always a little difference, but nonetheless, they have many of the same components. Whoop, here's the CI pump. So this is a direct coupled, okay? So you, you can kind of see the difference there. The motor is the impeller shaft. Uh, the motor is the impeller shaft. So a lot of the components, obviously not the base, but a lot of the other components in, uh, in bearing frame, there's not a bearing frame either, are the same, right? Uh, but there's a couple of others that I want to at least point out. And these are actually on the FI pump as well, but they, it's, that, that drawing was, uh, that page was getting a little messy. So I wanted to separate them out and, and show them here. In, in, integrally, I don't even know how to say the word, but they're part of the part of the casing, cast feet, okay? And if you look back, you can see they're on this uh, as well. And, and by the way, um, uh, the wet end, right? The wet end for a CI pump model, uh, I'm gonna make up some numbers, 4009, and a an wet end for a FI pump 4009 are the same. So they're the same. So uh, uh, please uh, uh, beware of that. Another thing uh, uh, that's uh, all on all of our pumps and, and most manufacturers is the um, uh, tag, right? Uh, and we're going to get some. I'm going to show you some details of this. Um, uh, but on on that tag, the Takeo tag is E-Link Takeo connectivity, and I'm going to get into that. Um, and we're very proud of that. It actually won an award at Ashray a few years ago. Um, and in the next few slides, we'll uh, even dive deeper into that uh, and how much information is available. And these tags are uh, on uh, almost all of our commercial products. And so uh, what I am going to tell you in the next couple slides is available on the expansion tanks, on the KV pumps, KS pumps, TA pumps, and, and other fall rip, uh, plate and flame heat exchangers, uh, Be uh, Be Beverly, uh, uh, a bunch of uh, equipment. So um, let, let's kind of dive into that a little more. So here's that E-Link, uh, we, we mount two tags on the FI and CI pumps. One is on the pump, as you can see over here, right? And you can see it gets painted over, but uh, that's okay. And another is either on the bearing frame or the motor. Uh, sometimes we put it on the motor, sometimes we put it on the bearing frame. So, and, and we have this note right here as well, um, as you can see. Um, so you need to take your phone, 
right? An iPhone, uh, I forgot what uh, level you need. Um, and these, these tags have near field communication, NFC. Um, so, the, uh, and it's all, it's incredible what's available. So you take your phone and, and with the certain, the, the uh, Takeo app, and you take a picture of that tag. And um, let, let me, let's see if I can, and you can kind of see where these tags are and you can see all the, uh, what's available there. But when you take a, a, a picture of it, that tag brings you to a, a specific website just for that product, right? In this case, the pump, right? You can see a pump here, and it gives you access to product specification, CAD and Revit files, submittal sheets, repair parts, order information, technical support, take a rep, catalog info, and the PEI data. And I'm gonna talk about that very, very shortly as well. So that little tag, although it's, a, it's just a, a little component, um, has all of that information available. And we've been doing that now for, um, almost three years. Um, I, I'm sure I'm, I'm saying that number wrong, but um, so um, you're going to start seeing that out in the industry. And uh, uh, if, if you feel like uh, uh, getting uh, putting that in your specification, feel free that the, the, the HVAC hydronic pump should have a NFC tag mounted on it. Uh, uh, but, but anyways, and, and here's kind of what is what is available and you can kind of see what's available the product profile although i'm showing a, an expansion tank right but here's all the information for that and then parts and documents you can see all the part numbers so if it was a pump it would show you all the, the repair parts uh, for the seal and covers and whatnot and then uh, contact the sales rep you can see it has the sales rep so whoever whoever sold that product's uh, name uh, or you know the, the take a rep uh, his name would show up there and then you could email CAD or Revit uh, files for that uh, product as well. And then uh, we give you some uh, the, the contact take uh, technical services if you'd like. Um, so uh, really, there's a wealth of information um, uh, with those e-link tags. So uh, again, that's on our, our, our products in the PI, excuse me, CI and FI pumps have that as well. Another thing that I need to uh, touch upon, and I want to make sure, uh, I mean, we've had some webinars on this, but we find that uh, still people aren't 100% uh, sure about this. But all TACO pumps, all CI and FI pumps that need to be uh, DOE uh, uh, rated are DOE rated. And what I mean by that, I'm just going to touch upon it briefly. Um, uh, you know, you can get more information from our website. We have some webinars that uh, we spent a whole hour talking about the DOE uh, rating and whatnot. But the bottom line is the Department of Energy um, came out with some regulations for pump manufacturers, HVAC hydronic pump manufacturers. And it, the relevant products for TACO are the pump, two of them are the pumps I'm talking about today, the FIs and the CIs. And then these three uh, bad boys down here that we'll, we'll, we'll dive into on a, a different uh, webinar uh, in the future, K the KBKSs, KBKS, and the 1900s. And then, uh, so uh, I'm bringing this up because I want to show you uh, the, the new tags that are mounted onto the pumps. But here's what uh, pumps are, so, uh, are, or what range of pumps are uh, need to be qualified. One to 200 horse, one to 200 horse, okay, where's my, there's my mouse, one to 200 horse and only speeds of nominal speeds of 1800 and 3600. So any 1200 uh, uh, speed pump does not have a DOE rating, okay? But this will kind of explain it a little more. And again, I'm just trying to touch upon it uh, briefly. Uh, like I said, there's a lot more information on our website about these DOE uh, ratings. And personally, uh, if I was a consulting engineer, I would just add into my specs that all pumps must meet DOE uh, requirements. All HVAC hydronic pumps must meet DOE requirements. And then really, um, uh, unless you want to dive into it more, uh, you're, you're covered, right? You're covered. You can't, you, uh, somebody can't supply or, or, or put a pump on there that's not. But what it is, it, it, yep. We got a couple of uh, questions. Um, okay, with, uh, great. Because I've been wrapping a bit. So the first question says, uh, just to confirm, the information on the tags are specific to the order. I believe that's that's correct, right? Correct. So and each tag, each tag is its own. Uh, it, yes, each tag is specific for that product, that pump, or that tank, or whatever. Um, so no two tags are are alike, and it's all tied into uh, our in-house Epicor system. 
that's where all the information comes from. So great question though. I should have mentioned and then the that. second question is, um, and I'm going to be silent and let you answer this one. Can those well, tags be removed if somebody tries to pry them off for some odd reason? <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> That's why we put two on there. But um, uh, yes, uh, unfortunately, um, we cannot make them not. Yeah. I, I don't know how else to to answer that question except to say yes sometimes you're a better wordsmither than me Rich. well you got any... uh, <laughs> the way i would answer that is you know the adhesive that's used to hold the tags on is very robust it's not going to fall off someone would definitely have to sabotage the pump and scrape it off or use a putty knife or something like that so yeah they they can be pried off but you know the metal tag if you work hard at it can also be pried off the Motor we, tag can be pried off. If somebody I, I wants think, to sabotage something, they'll figure out a way to do it. But, uh, I, I think, I think, um, uh, not many, but sometimes, you know, especially 10, 12 years into it, uh, this tag that I'm pointing to right now, the pump tag, or what the, I showed it on another screen, uh, may get removed because people want to take that into their office or whatever. Uh, so I, I, I truly believe, well, maybe I'm just being naive that. There's a better possibility that the uh, Takeo tags, uh, the E-Link tags are going to stay on more so than the uh, one with this information here. Because really, a lot of people won't even know what this is um, uh, specifically. But um, yeah, you, yeah. unfortunately, they can be taken off. <laughs> they can be taken off. And Sounds by the good. way, for chilled water applications, many times the casing uh, or potentially could be insulated. Um, uh, so the tag is underneath that insulation. And you can still um, uh, uh, get, you, you still can be able to uh, uh, read the information through the, or the phone still picks it up uh, through the insulation. So uh, uh, just uh, keep that in mind. Thanks, Brett. So, yep. Any, anything else, Rich? Or are we moving on? No, let's move on. Moving on, moving on. So anyways, uh, please be aware that, or, or, or be advised that Takeo pumps meet the DOE requirements. Uh, personally, I think we uh, exceed them uh, better than most, uh, uh, and we could get into another whole discussion about that, but that's not what this presentation is about. And uh, uh, so, but on the tags, and this is important for, for, for all you folks, um, on the, the pump tag, not just for Takeo, all pump manufacturers now need to have this information right here. The, the, the um, PEI number, which is the um, pump energy index, that's the rating from the, the, the Department of Energy came up with and the actual DOE basic model number. So that information has to be on there as well as the documentation associated with the pump. You know, the, the submittal data sheet, the, the curves and, and everything like that. So uh, that, that, that's some knowledge that, uh, um, you, you know, when you start getting submittal packages from, uh, from people nowadays, they make sure that information's on there or query them, query them to see why it's not. So, you know, labeling requirements, things change uh, for many of us, uh, uh, and DOE uh, has changed it for pumps. And uh, uh, this, this is already our third year, Rich. Uh, when was that? Two, this is year two, right, of that requirement? Yeah, it was uh, January of uh, 2020, I think. I forget. So here's some operating specifications of the FI and CI pump, right? First off, the flanges, right? So you, you kind of rate these pumps by flange ANSI class, uh, classifications. So you can get it 125 pounds or 250 pounds. So if you have a high rise or higher pressure uh, project, you might want that ANSI flange uh, for the bigger ones. But to be quite honest, uh, for the most part, most of ours are 125 pounds that, that are going through the uh, facility on a daily basis. Pressure ratings, a little higher there. You can see 125 PSIG. Um, or you can get an optional, the, the 250 flange has a 300 PSIG. And uh, I'll get into why there's stars there in a second. Temperature ratings, uh, standard, they're, they're both 250 or optional, although we have seen higher applications, uh, but con consult the factory just to make sure, and, and we get into some of the details there. The pressure rating above 150 degrees, um, you actually have to see this uh, ANSI B16.1 chart. I didn't put it in here because it's kind of tough to read, but it is in our documentation. Uh, it doesn't go down a lot, but after 150 pounds, 
excuse me, 150 degrees, the pressure rating of the pump casing goes down a little bit. Not that much. Uh, I think you may lose 10% all the way up to 220 or something like that, but you could look at that chart and, and see that. So it, it, for the most part, it shouldn't affect your your design. And I'm pretty sure this is common for, for all of us uh, pump manufacturers. And then for operating temperatures above 250, so you can get it, but you need a cooled flush line is required for optimum seal life. And we actually recommend that you do one for two, above 225 as well. And that uh, you can get more information uh, from your rep, rep on that uh, as well. But it's a seal flush line to keep the seal. Uh, they just don't like that temperature. It starts to get out of their, uh, their bailey wick. So here's some of the material of the constructions, okay? Uh, and I'm not going to read read the whole chart, but I am going to point out some of the differences, okay? Uh, so, you know, we have the different uh, uh, ratings, 100, 125 and 250, while the casing for the 125 is cast iron A, uh, A48 uh, class 30A. For the bigger pump, or for the higher rated pump, bigger flanges and uh, higher rated pressure, it's actually ductile iron. OK, uh, the casing itself. But notice the covers uh, for both are the are the same. Uh, so our engineers, when they did their uh, um, the design work, they were able to use the same uh, covers. Uh, uh, as a manufacturer, you try to uh, limit as much uh, inventory and, and, and shelf numbers as you can. And that's uh, what, what we were able to do there. And then you can see the uh, impellers uh, for the most part are bronze, um, as you can see there. Uh, we, we don't have a wear ring as a standard. You can order one um, as an option. Um, uh, some folks have that in their spec, so uh, our reps do order them as, a, uh, as an option uh, there. The shaft is stainless steel, uh, pretty straightforward for both uh, uh, sides there. It's pretty robust, uh, pretty heavy duty shaft. Um, uh, it's so uh, pr pretty uh, straightforward there. The shaft sleeve, it actually goes on to the shaft and that's where the impeller get, gets uh, put on and whatnot. Standard is bronze, and and, uh, and some folks uh, in their specs uh, require stainless steel, so you can get a stainless steel one. I personally would recommend staying with the bronze because it's a lot easier. Uh, well, sometimes when you put stainless on stainless, it, it it gets to be a real pain, especially after a few a few years of uh, operation. So if you ever have to take that off, you really got to use some pry bars and some strength, you know. Uh, 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 I don't think Brett Zorba could do it. You might need someone a little stronger than me. So, uh, but personally, I, I recommend staying with the bronze shaft sleeve. But you know, there's other thought processes out there, and really, that's up to up to you folks. Mechanical seal, our our standards are the ceramic uh, with EPT um, uh, uh, rubber, uh, and that is good for clean water and um, uh, uh, rich. Oh my God. What, what, What's the chemical that we put in it for? Uh, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank. We we put uh, the help for um, cold water applications. We put in either propylene glycol, glycol. or oh, ethylene yeah. glycol. Yeah, thanks, Rich. God, we have a couple of you... quick questions. Actually, oh, great. I think we can answer a couple of them very very quickly. So uh, one person wrote in, what is the difference between PEI CL and PEI VL? Well, the PEI stands for, and someone asked earlier, what does PEI stand for? PEI stands for the Pump Energy Index. That's what the three letters stand for. And the CL is for constant load, which means constant speed pumps. And VL means for variable load or variable speed pumps. So the PEI VL value would imply that it has to be supplied with a variable frequency drive. So those are the distinctions between CL for constant load and VL for variable load. Great questions. And then the other uh, point that someone brought up is it's worth mentioning uh, for the folks in Canada that NRCAN, which I think yep. most of us call it uh, NRCAN, I guess, I yep. don't know. Um, so they... Uh, NRCAN has adopted the same Department of Energy regulations that the United States has published and in the same time period back in 2020, January 27th of 2020. And then the last question, um, and this one I need a little help with, Brett. I, I have yeah. a feeling I know the answer, but is the uh, are the DOE requirements being written into code yet? 
And I'm guessing that it will find its way into ASHRAE 90.1, which will become part of the uh, energy code for most uh, areas of the of North America. But I don't think ASHRAE has updated 90.1 since the published, I mean, since the requirements, uh, DOE requirements went into force. So in other words, the uh, 90.1, I think, comes out every three years, is it? Revised every three years? I think so. And uh, and maybe someone in the audience can help us. Yeah, they, that. someone help might know. With that question, is, uh, is the latest ASHRAE published after the DOE regulation went into effect? Maybe someone knows that and could help us out. So those are the uh, questions, and uh, hopefully we can get some more. These are great questions. Thanks a lot. And I hope, hopefully more questions will come in. So Brett, take it away. Thanks, Rich. Yeah, great questions. Great questions. I uh, kind of, I didn't want to, yeah, the, the DOE is its own, uh, has its own life. That's for sure. Mechanical seals. Um, there is a, one of the handouts is a, a seal face material comparison. Um, it's very difficult to say what seal, what material for what application um, uh, most of the applications we see uh, for clean water, the ceramic or the um, silicone carbide seats are going to uh, are going to do the job. Uh, but you know, sometimes you get into dirtier applications. I mean, may, maybe it's a, an older system with a lot of sand. Maybe one of those other options may be a better one. So maybe that uh, uh, our uh, John Crane uh, uh, individual uh, passed that information along. Um, and if you want more information, uh, I, I will say this, um, uh, unfortunately, the pandemic kind of put a kibosh on this, but uh, the local John Crane people, uh, salespeople can come into your facility and really g give you a great education on seals, especially for HVAC pumps and, and, and w which one's better and, and explain them uh, and, and whatnot. So uh, just, uh, I, I really, I, I'm not trying to defer it, but it, it, it's a very tough subject to go into. Like I said, for the most most applications, ceramic and or the silicone carbide are going are going to do the job. Uh, we do offer uh, for the CI and FI pumps an NSF rated one for chilled water only, and its rating is for the cold 23. Uh, and you can see some of the material of construction here is is, is uh, pretty much the same, except you notice the impeller is stainless steel instead of bronze. Um, uh, everything else is is pretty straightforward there. And it does have to have the seal flush line assembly kit. You can see on the uh, other ones, that was an option. You could could add it for the FI pumps, um, but nonetheless, on the um, uh, NSF rated one, you do need that kit um, uh, sent and installed. Let's talk about our impellers, okay? So obviously that's a very important part of, of, of a FI CI pump or any pump, right? Uh, and uh, Rich kind of uh, reminds me that's really, the only, besides the shaft, wrote the moving component of these pumps, right? The water moves through there, but it's the impeller that's spinning. So at TACO, our pumps, uh, at least the FI, KV, TAs, CIs, and KVs, KSs, uh, the, the majority of them, we use the lost foam process uh, to manufacture our impellers. And we're very, very proud of that. Uh, uh, it, it, it really has helped our efficiencies and just the quality of our impellers. And you can kind of see the difference between a, a lost foam run, and I'm gonna explain exactly what that is shortly, compared to a sand cast one domestically or offshore. The smoothness, the smoother that impeller, uh, uh, the, the better, right? The, uh, and uh, the, the, the more repeatable. So what is that lost foam process? There it is. <laughs> the tools are actually made out of aluminum. We actually, our, our, our engineer, our pump engineers, actually send the impeller drawings uh, through through the internet or whatever. They, they email them down there. It's all 3D modeling and whatnot. And they take that and that's how they make the aluminum tools. And then, so there's no uh, wear on these tools and it's an injection foam that goes into that, um, uh, into that um, tool. And each piece is dimensionally identical. So we're not, things aren't changing over time. And you'll see what I mean by that shortly. So here's a picture of the foam impeller prior to ca casting. And I, I noticed some names that uh, have been to our facility and we actually have some of the, you know, just uh, as so someone can actually touch them, but they're just a, a piece of foam that is 
it replicates the, an impeller uh, 100%. So then you dip the foam in a clay slurry. You can kind of see it here, right? So it's, and let it dry. So there's that foam in a clay slurry, slurry and you let it dry. So this is a, an investment casting process. So now that clay slurry is put, uh, foam is vaporized and replaced by molten bronze. Uh, so, so you can see the advantages there. Superior surface quality, creating smoother passageways, higher efficiencies in hydraulic performance. And really the most important part is repeatability, no tooling uh, wear. Uh, so it's a, it's a pretty crazy project uh, process that, that, that's done. I've never seen it in person uh, but a couple of folks at TACO have, uh, but nonetheless, um, it's just a very repeatable process. Over time, sand pack uh, degrades the pattern, uh, and it's really these uh, these impellers are like making a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy, of a copy and, and things change over time. So you could have some issues there. That's why we uh, went uh, we standardize on the lost foam process for our impellers. Pretty 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 good. Dry shaft design. So this is here's that bearing frame, right? The, I think we have five or six different sizes based on based on the requirements. Uh, but the uh, the dry shaft design uh, protects the pump shaft by eliminating contact between the shaft and the circulating fluid. Pretty ma makes sense, right? So the water is on the left side, and the and the right side there's no water getting into that uh, that that area. More reliable by preventing shaft corrosion and uh, easier to service, right? So, so you can slide that sleeve off. So there's that sleeve I was talking about before um, that is a uh, uh, bronze, so it's a, a lot easier to get it on and off. Um, like I said, some people want stainless, but um, really that's uh, so, something that uh, you, you may you may want to uh, get, 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 get away from. So there's, uh, there's kind of the components of, of a seal uh, right there, and that's the seat. So that's the one uh, that uh, sits right in there, pops right in there, right there. You can see it mounted right there. And here's kind of a, a, a even more blow up uh, of this. And really, this is for education, right? The, uh, maybe you get involved with taking pumps apart. There could be some contractors on here, or, or, or I know there's some reps that have taken pumps uh, apart, or someone at their uh, facility has. So that there's the rotating elements of the seal. The pump shaft is tucked back here. That stationary seat that actually sits right in here. So um, if you if you watch one of our videos, when they change the seal, you got to pop that out. And there's the cover. Uh, that's mounted right here. You can see the um, uh, one of our uh, tappings for 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 po possibly a pet pressure gauge, and there's that slip-on shaft sleeve, and there's your impeller. So that's that dry shaft design. The O-ring, this O-ring creates a seal against the back of the impeller, so the impeller pops right in against that, and that pump shaft um, uh, uh, mounts there as well, and that seal sits there. So the impeller washer it has an O-ring as well. And, and anytime, uh, you know, if you, you're working on pumps and you start taking things apart, I always recommend replacing O-rings um, uh, with, with new ones. Um, uh, you, you know, sometimes they get pinched uh, during during removal, putting together. So I just recommend you you, you replace them. You can see that machine surface, uh, ceiling surface right there, uh, where that, that, that piece goes in to, to mount that impeller. There's an impeller washer there. So that forms a tight seal uh, on that sh smooth machine surface on the front of the impeller. And there's a dowdy washer, and that's another component that uh, I personally recommend that you you, you uh, replace. It, you know, if you start having to take those apart and putting them back together, uh, they can get compromised very very quickly, and then you're gonna you're gonna have some issues, uh, some uh, potentially. So uh, something to consider. And then there's that impeller boat. The dowdy washer provides a tight seal. Uh, between them so just kind of a how it's put together right uh, and uh, it, you know it looks complicated but uh, once you start actually doing it, it it doesn't take much time and if you have the right tools right it's like any project uh, how many times do I have a home project and I'm missing the, the correct tool and I can't find it ay, 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 ay. anyways and then uh, you can see that impeller and there's the cover and that impeller has a uh, it's sealed against the shaft sleeve and o-ring so uh, pretty much how that dry shaft design works and again, that's uh, for both the CI and, and, and FI models. Heavy duty bearing frames. So I, I talked about the bearing frames. There's that stainless steel shaft. Uh, and we uh, have standardized on sealed for life bearings. All right, and the L10 life, uh, some of you may see that in the spec. I know we see it, some of our reps see it uh, uh, on, a, on a somewhat regular basis. 
these bearings are, are, are good for at least 60,000 hours. They're L10 life, if not longer. Uh, so uh, they do not require lubrication. You can order it. So if it's in your spec and, and some of these, uh, you know, some facility, uh, school or whatever demands that they, the bearing frames come with uh, lubricated bearings, you can order it that way. Um, so you just would need to let the, uh, uh, the manufacturer's rep know that. Uh, so they're, they're very heavy duty. Um, and like I said, there's different sizes of them, uh, uh, as you can only imagine. And they do come with a Fushita seal. So this seal sits right in here because that's a, a, obviously that's a, a pathway, right? That's a pathway. But that with that seal sitting in there, that protects the bearings from external moisture and air, airborne contaminants from getting into that cavity, from getting into that cavity. So um, uh, that, that is just something that we've standardized on. Um, and uh, we, we, we feel pretty comfortable with that. <clears throat> the pump couplings, uh, the pump couplings are Woods Duraflex. Uh, the, uh, couplings are standard. They're ideal for all applications. Uh, very, very uh, superior for variable speed applications. Um, and uh, they, uh, so we've standardized on those uh, uh, qu quite a long time ago. Um, uh, so uh, just keep that in mind. So when you, th this coupling has two halves. When you take it apart, right, you'll see the two couplings of the two shafts uh, lining up against each other. Um, if you read our instructions, if you read our instructions from an alignment standpoint, those shafts have to be within five thousandths vertically and horizontally and angrily. So um, uh, th there's a whole process of how you uh, need to uh, make sure those are in alignment. Most of our reps um, uh, will offer that service uh, for final alignment. And we do recommend, especially on the bigger pumps, that their final alignment is done with a laser, uh, laser alignment. Uh, so again, you could talk to your manufacturer's rep for more information on that and what abilities and, 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 and whatnot that their team, so, so a lot of them have their own team that does it, or they have, uh, they have a contract with somebody that does it, uh, that can do it for you. But it's very, very important. If those things aren't, those couplings aren't aligned properly, um, there's going to be some issues, um, uh, and that pump's just going to make noise, vibrate, or uh, and it's not going to last long at all. Um, so uh, keep, keep that in mind, and uh, so something to be to consider there. Externally flush seals. A, a couple other of the handouts that I uh, that are attached are some information on uh, uh, a Kuno filter and a Kynar filter, and uh, we we see this. Some of our reps see this in engineering specs, okay. And maybe for more critical applications or or whatnot, maybe a municipal application or or or, or whatnot. But these filters uh, we we send out, and they're not mounted. They're not mounted, um, so someone has to mount them in the field, and that could be put into your specification as whatnot. But they really help that they flush that seal. They use water from the system, uh, and they spin it around in there, so they get the dirt out and grit, and, and they flush the seal. So uh, though uh, you know. I think most pump manufacturers offer them. We, we, we offer them, and, and uh, you can get more information from your manufacturer's rep. But there's a, those little brochures have some information about them as well. They're not very complicated. I'm not saying they're complicated, but what they do is very, very important um, uh, for, or possibly very important um, as well. Rich, I've been going for a while. We got any questions, or, we, uh, or, or am I putting everyone to sleep? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's not good. Rich? Calling all Rich? Oh, sorry. I'm, That's okay. And you can hear me okay now? Yeah. So, yeah, I'll we've had a couple questions. questions. I've been going for a while. They helped us out and said that uh, the latest uh, uh, ASHRAE 90.1, I think it's 2019, and since DOE went into effect 2020, right. and the next... Um, publication of 90 ASHRAE 90.1 should be in 2022 for it, because I think they come out every three years. So my my guess is that the new DOE requirements will be spelled out in the uh, 2022 uh, ASHRAE 90.1. So look for that and hopefully it'll be in there. Regardless of whether it's in the ASHRAE 90.1, or if it's adopted by state and local codes, it's still the law of the land. So as of January 27th, 2020, you cannot purchase a pump 
uh, from a manufacturer in the United States or Canada does not, that does not comply with the uh, DOE regulations. So hopefully that clears that up. And there may have been some confusion, Brett. Um, yeah. I think you had a little chart that indicated that the pumps had stainless steel shafts, if you went back a little bit. Yeah. And then you had the NSF requirement. And I think you used the word chilled water, but I think um, I think the, uh, yeah, it's actually, it's uh, domestic cold water. So before domestic right. water systems. Yeah, uh, I, not I, I think I misspoke there. You're right, Rich, I might have uh, misspoke. But it's not the, uh, it's the stainless steel is for, uh, is also standard, whether it's NSF 61 or not, correct? From the previous slide? For the, shaft. Slide. For the, the shaft, shaft, correct. Is stainless steel. What does change is, I believe, the impeller. When right. you go to NSF 61, the impeller goes from bronze to stainless steel. So yeah. hopefully that's the bron what we call bronze fitted pump have a bronze impeller. The NSF uh, for, for uh, domestic cold has a stainless steel impeller. That's Correct. pretty much the only difference besides requiring uh, the um, uh, uh, flush line. Great, and another great catch. question came up is uh, for the, uh, you showed the uh, lost uh, foam. Yep. Um, is that also the same process for not only the bronze impellers, but also stainless steel? Is that the same process that they use for stainless uh, that's steel? That's a good question. I, I believe so, but I'm not 100% sure. I, I'll so we'll have, have to, to give uh, a clarification on that yeah, and hopefully yeah. we can let everyone yeah. know. All right. Good question. Uh, let's, see. let's keep going. This great questions, by the way. I'm really, yeah. this is cool stuff. People know uh, more than we do, pumps, as usual. Do all right, pump right? sizes use a bolt to attach the impeller? I'm sorry? Do all pump sizes use the bolt to attach the impeller to the shaft? Yes, there's a key there as well. There's a shaft key, but yes, um, uh, um, I, I don't know why I, I am not, I, I am hesitant to say yes, uh, but I believe so. Yeah, because today we're just talking about the uh, FICI. So for all of right. the FICIs, they, they use a bolt to attach the yep. impeller to the shaft. So uh, let's see, a couple of others, and then we'll have to go back because we're running out of time here. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to actually, um, someone made a note uh, that says that uh, they've had experiences, not, not necessarily Taco, but they've had an experience where the couplers shear off periodically. And, and I'm going to guess and say, if there is a coupling issue that's shearing off, chances are the alignment has not been done properly. So the alignment between the motor shaft and the pump shaft has to be within five thousandths of an inch. And if it's more than that, and substantially more, then that would cause the uh, flex coupling to uh, flex more often than what it's supposed to, and it'll probably heat up and shear off. So if there is a problem, if you're seeing a problem out there, uh, my guess is that it's not aligned properly. Yeah, that so, would be my uh, there guess. There are a few other questions, Brett. Well, I'm going to uh, have you move ahead, and yeah. then we'll pick yeah. up a couple of these other questions. All right. So the other thing I want to point out um, for this uh, uh, picture here is this component over here. Uh, this, I mean, many of us call that some trim, but that's actually a suction diffuser. And uh, um, as you can see, it's bolted right up to the uh, inlet of the pump. Um, it, I, we we kind of have a cutaway here, so it does have a... Uh, uh, a strainer in there to pick up big stuff. Uh, hopefully your system's very clean, so that's not doing too much there. Actually, there's a startup strainer too that we're not showing that needs to be taken out after startup. But nonetheless, um, that there helps get the proper uh, flow uh, of uh, straightening flow into the uh, laminar flow. That's what these pumps like, and I'm going to get into some of that uh, uh, very very shortly. So I'm, I'm going to. You know, I, I talked about pumps and I really dove into it and, and maybe uh, hopefully you learned some stuff there, some great questions. But I want to talk about some rule, basic rules of pump piping, because these FIs and CIs aren't going to work and neither are other pumps and, unless maybe some of this stuff isn't uh, at least considered. Right. Uh, and here's some five basic rules. And these are basic, very, very basic. Right. Uh, and can they always be met? No, but you know it could lead to some issues. You, we try to keep the suction piping as short as possible. Suction pipe diameter should be equal or greater 
than the pump inlet. Right, so you don't want to you don't want to be restricting things there. That causes uh, flow issues going in there. And then try to eliminate as many elbows uh, mounted on or close to the inlet of the nozzle of the pump. And we recommend five to ten pipe diameters. You know, there's there's different numbers out there of straight run of pipe between the pump inlet and elbow, or or that suction diffuser. Although uh, that could have been one of the worst things ever uh, made in the, for pumps, <laughs> to be quite honest. And then uh, we're not talking double suction pumps today, but watch orientation of elbows, and we can get into that in another presentation. And try to eliminate potential. You know, I mean, when you go out to job sites, you, you see stuff for air pockets in that suction piping. Air and suction piping, this is going to cause issues that are going to just uh, really starve that pump. And uh, support piping, this is, this is something that uh, we see when we go out to job sites sometimes. The piping should be supported to ensure it does not cause strain on the pump casing, right? So you want to take all that weight off of the pump casing. So these are some basic rules uh, uh, that, that should be uh, included or thought about. The other thing Rich and I recommend, and you've seen it on one of the pictures, is make sure your pump has a pressure gauge on the discharge side, right? We, we got that little uh, uh, piece that you could tap it right into the tapping right on the pump itself, as you've seen in that picture. Uh, this will help you diagnose pump system problems. Uh, I, I mean, it should be there. Uh, it's, it, I mean, I mean, most applications, most mechanical rooms, I see it. It's there. Uh, you know, it's you, you take it as a, as something that's just the norm. But, uh, but please uh, include it in your details, right? It's also useful to have one on the on the suction side, and that differential pressure. Uh, you know, to, the, the the difference in pressure is proportional to the total head. So it's helpful. Uh, we don't see that as much, but boy, it's it's really important to have it on the discharge side. How to control flow, okay? Uh, and here's some basic stuff here. If you need to control the flow, use a valve on the discharge side. Never put it on the suction side. Never, ever uh, control the flow with a valve on the suction side. Shut off valves, that's one thing, you know, to isolate the system. But don't control flow with a valve on the suction side. That's just going to cause issues of that water getting into the pump. Or you can use a VFD or trim the impeller, right? I didn't really talk about impeller trimming, uh, but uh, most all pump manufacturers, uh, the pumps, the, the impellers, pictures that you've seen, I could tell they weren't trimmed because it, it hadn't been uh, cut yet. So um, we uh, have a maximum impeller that goes into that casing and a minimum, 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 minimum impeller. And then uh, based on your specific requirements for your system, we can trim it to any place in between. So that's another way to control flow. Uh, suction valves, right? Uh, this is some basic information. Uh, put in your details, maybe gate valves on the pump suction. Why? Because um, they don't offer resistance to flow and can provide a tight shutoff, right? So it's a simple gate valve. Many times we see butterfly valves, uh, uh, but they do provide some resistance, right? So you're, you're, you're affecting that flow a little bit. Uh, and can potentially be a source of hang-ups, which would be critical in the, at the suction. So, you know, something to consider that's a simple detail change, uh, and maybe it's already on your details, but just, just some minor, uh, not minor, but, you know, this, this stuff here, uh, I, I mean, my, my good friend Rich is, is living with some uh, uh, pump issues on, on a particular project, uh, and, and it, it's never a three to five horse pump. Uh, power pump, right? It's always uh, 75 or, or above horsepower, maybe a little less than that. Uh, but, you know, stuff like this are some of the little details that can prevent inf uh, issues um, when you install some of these pumps. Uh, and our pumps, you know, these, uh, these centrifugal pumps w work most efficiently when the fluid is delivered in a surge-free, smooth laminar flow, right? So we, 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 as it comes around elbows, we don't want surges. We want laminar flow. Any type of turbulence uh, reduces efficiency and increases wear and tear on the pumps, bearing seals, and other components. And, and then it can cause other problems, vibration, right? And then, and things, premature failure. So uh, really, that piping, uh, if you, if when you go start, start signing off projects, uh, take a look at that piping and feel comfortable with it. And, and as you gain experience, uh, you know, bring in, bring in the Takeo rep uh, if, if you'd like. He, 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 uh, he's got, he's got a, a, a hand in the, in the cookie jar to make sure it goes in properly as well, so he can give you some uh, guidance on, on, on some of that as well. The last slide I have. 
um, uh, thank God, I'm sure, sure most of you are starting to say uh, out there, is uh, here's our philosophy on parts. Um, so all of those pumps there, uh, different sizes, right? CIs, uh, uh, actually there's some verticals there. I can tell from some of the pictures, KVs, CIs, FIs. Uh, that's how many gaskets, seals, and bearings cover the entire line of Takeo pumps. So um, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, our reps probably cringe because they can't spell, sell a lot of RP parts. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, that's that's the amount of components. Uh, they, right, what are there? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, five uh, O-rings or, or whatnot. And uh, seats, uh, seal seats, uh, there's only five of those. So there's we tried to, uh, you know, minimum requ requirement on replacement parts. So, so Rich, I'm going to transition to uh, the website to show off some uh, videos or access to videos. Uh, you got any questions out there as I'm transitioning? Yeah, we do. We have uh, several great questions and a couple of uh, clarifications. Let's do the clarification first. Yeah. Um, Warren had made a note that the picture that you showed for the cutaway on the end suction diffuser, um, Warren is saying that the latest iteration of that is a, I think, let me make sure, it's it's a back pullout design. This one shows an angle pullout. Yeah. Where it pull out the bottom. Yep. And the, the latest iteration of our end suction diffusers are actually uh, back pullouts. So, yeah, so Warren, this, thank this you would for be that in a different uh, uh, configuration. Yeah, that's an older yeah. picture. Good catch, uh, Warren. Thank you. Good catch. Yep. And let's see. Are the shaft alignment services included in the price of the pump equipment? So um, there's a couple of ways I'd like to answer that. First of all- That's a good the, question though. You know that, Rich? I like great that question. question. That's a uh, great question. The uh, FI pump that Brett's been talking about today, that comes pre-aligned, that comes aligned from the factory. We always recommend that there is a field alignment uh, that takes that should be done, like Brett had suggested, uh, a laser alignment in the field. Now, whether it's included or not in the price is up to the- uh, is up to our rep network. And if they're working with a specification that says it has to be, um, you know, factory authorized or uh, pump supplier uh, field alignment, they would make the decision to include that in their price or to identify it as a separate line item. So again, they, they come from the factory pre-aligned, but they do need to be aligned in the field and whether or not it's done as an additional service or included in the price is up to the, the reps in terms of the services that they're providing and, and what the specifications are asking for. Okay, um, I'm gonna skip, uh, we're almost out of time, Brett, so why don't you go over a couple yep. of things that you wanna touch base on and then we can uh, try to answer a few more of these questions that are hanging okay. out here. So I, um, I, I transitioned to our website, right? Takeocomfort.com. And the reason I'm showing you is there's three videos, there's quite a few videos on here, but I want to make the, the, the you folks, the audience aware of a few of the uh, specific videos that are associated with the pumps I was talking about today. So you go to our homepage um, and you click on support, how to, videos pretty straightforward so far and since uh, we're talking commercial i'm going to scoot down to commercial and lo and behold there's the first one i touched upon this a little bit but there's actually a video on here on how to properly grout a taco base mounted pump and it's an actually fi pump and you actually see the contractor and the work that he does and it's being narrated so there's a video uh, on our website uh, so if you've never seen it uh, I, I think it's, I don't even think it's 10 minutes long. I'm not going to play it. Uh, I'm saying people are out there, oh, thank God he's not going to play it. Uh, but nonetheless, there is a video that shows you how to do that. There's other videos here as well that uh, Rich and I and others have worked on. But where is, it's never where you want it, right? How to replace the seal on a Takeo CI series pump. So there is a video that shows you how to replace the seal on a CI pump and how to replace the oh, I went too I went too quick. How to replace the seal on an FI series pump? So uh, you know I, I I spent some time on the seal, uh, and you know the, to be quite honest, the, the, it's going to be something that's going to be needed needed to be changed. They're, they they should last in a clean system, properly uh, maintained uh, for quite a while. But sooner or later, there's going to something's going to cause those to be ch changed. Uh, hopefully not uh, during startup, but nonetheless, 
uh, here's some videos that show you how to do it. Um, I'm not saying it's hard or easy or whatnot, but these videos do show you how to do it. So that is all I have, Rich. <laughs> Sounds great, Brett. So I think we're just about at the end of our time limit here. We are. It's one o'clock East Coast time. So um, at this point, we do have some open questions, and unfortunately, we're out of time. So um, we'll be collecting those questions and sending out answers over the next few days. At this point, I wanted to thank uh, Brett for the great presentation, covering a lot of ground here, and also thanks uh, for the questions. These have been great questions today uh, from the uh, po folks that are participating, and special thanks for our uh, reps out there that have been able to add some additional information. Uh, so this is great stuff. So this has been one of our most interactive presentations. So it seems like there's a lot of interest in, in uh, these pump fundamentals. So with that, I'm going to ask Brett to say goodbye and then I'll sign off and we'll go from there. Thanks everybody. I, I appreciate everyone sitting through. Uh, uh, hopefully you got something out of it. Like I said at the beginning, my goal was to at least, uh, you know, make you aware uh, of, of the products. Uh, and, and to be quite honest, uh, like I said, it, uh, you know, it, it, most manufacturers have a, it, it, this this presentation can, can be centered around a lot of the manu pump manufacturers that, that, that you folks are common out there. Uh, you know, and I, I, I didn't want to, I, I wasn't throwing any stones any place. I was just trying to talk about our products and, and educate uh, the, the folks like yourself. And I, I do appreciate your questions. Great questions. And thank you very much. Rich, take it away. Thanks a lot, Brett. And thanks everyone for participating. And hopefully we'll see you at the next TACO Tuesday. If you have any other questions, uh, please uh, submit them and we'll be able to answer them uh, via email over the next few days. So take care, everyone. Stay safe. Stay safe.